Good evening. I'd like to call the November 28th, 2023 school board meeting to order, please. Can I have a roll call? Maggie Larson. Here. Todd Marsh. Here. Carrie Clark. Excused. Paul Hackworth. Here. Tom McCallion. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Here. Susan Tierney. Here. Mandy Demers. Here. I'd like to welcome uh, the Summersworth Middle, Middle School students to come up and lead us in the pledge this evening, if you don't mind. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice job. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right. At this time, um, we'd like to have any comments by visitors this evening. Just approach the podium, turn the microphone on, say your name and address, and we'd be happy to hear you. Okay, seeing none, we'll move to agenda item number two, the consent calendar. What is the wish of the board um, regarding the consent calendar? <clears throat> I make a motion to accept the consent calendar as presented. Perfect. Seconded. Second. Oh. Okay. <laughs> any discussion about any items listed on the consent calendar this evening? All right, seeing none, all in favor of adopting the consent calendar, say aye. 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 All right, consent calendar is adopted moving to our reports um, agenda item 3.1 our student representative report this evening we have jack rossiter here a s amazing sophomore from our high school national honor society i can go on if you'd like me to list more baseball <laughs> amazing ace award something like that um, and you'll be giving us a report um, regarding activities in the district and the high school so welcome thank you madam chair um, good evening everyone my name is Jack Rosser and I'm the school uh, rep school board representative for the high school and tonight I will be giving a report informing everyone of everything that's going on in our school the winter sports are starting it's that time already uh, games begin uh, begin just next week for boys and girls basketball and over the past month since the last school board meeting NHS has been doing a lot of activities there's a blood drive this Thursday 11 um, 30 if anyone would like to join there are still open slots the Krispy Kreme fundraiser concluded we sold almost 300 dozens so thank you to everybody who bought a dozen and helped support uh, the NHS chapter and this year we were able to raise funds to make 26 Thanksgiving baskets and hand them all out to members of our community who were in need of a Thanksgiving meal and in the drama department, Summersworth Night Live um, is a play on SNL, it's just a bunch of small skits, um, is going on December 8th and 9th in the Black Box Theater in the high school. And this year we had three representatives in the Macy's, Day, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, so thank you all for representing Summersworth. The band and chorus have their winter concerts on December 12th for the high school and December 14th for the middle school. And band and chorus is also selling wreaths for Christmas to raise funds for the program. One of Student Council's biggest projects is about to go underway. The clothing drive, which is a, uh, a drive to raise, um, to get clothes to those who are in need in our community, uh, is on December 15th, Friday. I think that's two Fridays from now. And they're accepting donations up until December 8th. So um, if you can, go out, donate some clothes, and refer people to um, the clothing drive if they're in need. I Apply Day was on 11-18. Uh, that's for seniors uh, to apply to any New Hampshire college at no cost with the assistance of a guidance counselor. Uh, from what I've heard, it went really well. Uh, lots of college applications went out. The school-based health clinic is set to open up next week in the high school. Students can pick up consent forms from the guidance or nurse's office. Um, the school board... Uh, oops, sorry. Parent-teacher conferences were last week. Uh, the Summersworth Middle School was on 11 the 20th and Summersworth High School is on that Tuesday, the 21st. And we are excited to announce uh, that we are receiving a donation of $1,000 from Dunkin' Donuts to support our efforts with PBIS. So a big thank you to Dunkin' Donuts for supporting our schools. And um, that concludes our report for the school board. So thank you. Great, thank you, Jack. Thanks so much. All right, moving to agenda item 3.2, our superintendent's report. 
We're big on donuts here in Summer's Earth. I know I bought five dozen of those Krispy Kremes that I'll be delivering out. <laughs> and Dunkin' Donuts has uh, graciously uh, provided some money to us. So, th And I know that's going to be well used by the students. I think that's going to be, I think I spoke with uh, Principal Thibault, and he said that's going to be ha uh, handing out um, special gifts for students who demonstrate positive things in our schools. So kudos to all the donuts that are out there. Uh, I have one item on, on my report tonight, and uh, it's a really important item. And um, I want to introduce Mr. James Bennett. Uh, if you could come on up to the podium here. Um, Mr. James Bennett is a representative to the Na National Gypsum, and he's going to present a uh, huge donation to the Summersworth uh, School District. And we appreciate it, and we're glad you're here. I got a call from him about uh, three weeks ago and said, hey, you know, would you like to you know, move forward with this uh, particular um, donation? We said, yes, we would, and it's going to be used for a good cause. It's going to be used for students. So without further ado, I'm going to let you explain. Uh, welcome uh, to, the, to the meeting tonight. Just your microphone, the button right there. It's okay. There you go. Hello. Yep. There you go. They give a million dollars across the country, all the facilities. We have a facility in Portsmouth, and this year uh, focuses on STEAM programs and technical schools, essentially. Um, our team decided that Summersworth has a good program. Uh, we like everything that's going on. We know it's difficult for towns to support things sometimes with um, the cost. So we'd like to donate $30,000 to the STEAM programs and CTC to help make sure the kids can have the things they need. So that's it. Thank you. And I was told I can well, present well, this to you. What we're going to do, I think Maggie wants to say, if you, before you hand the check over to Jack, yep. and Jack, you, you, know, you, yep. you can hold it, but you're not going to take it and cash it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, and if um, I, you, can, but, you can try to cash but it. But I think um, uh, Madam Chair yes. uh, Larson wants to say a few words, and I, be, and I believe yep. our director of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Techno Technology Center wants to say a few words as well, uh, Ms. Caitlin uh, Harrington. So, Harrington. Yeah, if Caitlin, it, if you can come up and... Jack, if I can release you from the chair to come down, just because this is going towards students. Just on behalf of the school board, Summersworth School Board, thank you so much. This is such a generous donation and something that we support as a board um, for the STEAM and all the, you know, the additional supports that our students in the trades and technology, the arts, math, um, you know, what this can offer is, is amazing on behalf of, you know, this entire community. Thank you so much. So just to brief, briefly add to the board's thank you with a little bit more on what our goal is for the money, um, our hope is to outline a plan that kind of at its basics answers this question. How can we get more kids more access? Uh, that's where all of our discussions have started with, access to tools, equipment, other resources, both in terms of supplies and activities, anything that gives the kids the chance to problem solve, use their hands and minds to create and imagine. Uh, we got a great group of collaborative people from the CTC, the high school, and other staff in the district that are passionate about STEM and the arts and have tasked ourselves to not only outline how best to use this donation, but to also outline potential future funding and resources to maintain what this donation starts. Uh, we want this to be sustainable. We're very hopeful this donation has the potential to create some long-term opportunities for lots of kids to learn how to create, communicate, and be critical thinkers. Please know we are grateful and we'll do our part to do something great with this money. So again, thank you to Mr. Bennett and his team at the Gold Bond Building in Portsmouth and for their commitment to the future employees of our communities by recognizing the importance of providing students opportunities now to be the innovators we need in the future. So thank you. Thank you so much. Does that mean I have more people to help with my steam boiler in about 10 years? Mm -hmm. Gosh, great meeting. All right. Mm -hmm. We're all set on your end, yep. and we'll, yep. we'll move on to um, our business administrator's report. 
Thank you. Thank you. I always follow the, the most exciting things, and then it's my turn. So. Okay, so included in your packet tonight is the updated budget with the um, changes from the supplemental appropriation. I just wanted to um, bring attention to a few things that I've encumbered throughout the budget. Um, so for salaries and benefits, um, we currently have um, a few positions still open. We have the music teacher at Idle, the split position between Idlehurst and Maplewood, and we have uh, five open paraprofessional positions <clears throat> among all the buildings. I've encumbered the funds for these positions based on the number of days remaining throughout the year and encumbered an estimate of what I for benefits and FICA and everything. I'm not sure until we hire somebody what they're going to come in for a plan. Um, each, each time I do a budget update, I'll adjust it based on the remaining days and release funds um, if we don't hire these positions. E each, each month when I do my report, I'll lessen the amount of days that I have to encumber and release those funds. Um, for substitute salaries, um, I looked at the average we've been spending per day um, from the beginning of the year to now, and I've done an encumbrance um, based on the average. Again, this will be an area where I look at every time we do a budget update and release or adjust as needed. Um, special education, I've been talking about this for, since the beginning of the year. Um, we have encumbered what we know at this point. Um, there are a couple of students who are on our radar for placements. However, they haven't been placed yet, so they have no funds have been encumbered at this point for them. Uh, two of the paraprofessional openings that I talked about at the beginning are based on new students that have moved to the district that have significant needs. Um, if we can't hire them within, they will require us to hire somebody outside the district. Sometimes we have to do that if we can't find somebody to hire as an employee. We have to get a company to come in and do it. However, that would cost um, significantly more, so we're hopeful that we can find somebody uh, in district. Um, Transportation is also significantly increased. Currently, it's over budget by um, approximately $268,000. Um, we've been seeing an increase in um, McKinney-Vento homeless students that require transportation. So we've encumbered those funds. We are exploring all options. We can split costs with the other district where they came from. We do ride sharing and different things like that. DCYF sometimes picks up costs for those. So we're doing everything we can to minimize those costs. Um, as far as utilities go, uh, it's another area where I take my best guess on what we've been doing and seeing over the last few months, and I encumber that um, as needed. Again, each month I'll take a look at it, adjust accordingly. Um, for building level accounts, I've gone through each of the building level and, and the accounts that they have control over at the building, like supplies, print media, and things like that. And I've encumbered all of those funds. I've been meeting with the building admin over the last few days to go over where they stand and what they see remaining for the end of the year to see if we can release any of those funds. Um, the roof and the school-based health clinic. Um, I did uh, receive the updated um, roof project budget and it came in at the amount that we said. So I've adjusted that. Um, I'm waiting on the school-based health clinic. They actually sent it to me this afternoon. So for your next update, I'll update that. They were waiting for the additional quotes for the storefront doors. Remember we added that back into the project. But there was a couple of options that we need to look at. So no, tomorrow I'll be meeting with Jay to go over that and see which one we wanna go with. Um, as far as maintenance goes, I did uh, encumber all the remaining funds that Jay has in within his maintenance lines. Um, again, we're going to meet with Jay tomorrow, go over his lines. I don't really want to touch any of these funds just in case emergencies come up because, you know, with facilities in our buildings, sometimes that happens. So we'll adjust accordingly. I did encumber the SAU furnace based on the board's approval at the last meeting. So that was $22,000 to replace that furnace, and we're in the process of scheduling that to be completed. And then the additional expenditures, there was that list that, that was approved by the board um, with the additional adequacy funds. I've encumbered um, most of the projects. However, we did need to put a few of the projects on hold at this point based on where we are with the current budget. So it doesn't mean they're not going to get done. We're just kind of putting them on hold at this point just to see where the budget lies. So that was the uh, middle school tile replacement, the weight room. Um, the additional snowblowers and the grounds maintenance and the high school marquee sign. All the other items that were on that list we're moving forward with. Um, I know they're purchasing the, the, the uniforms that were on there. Um, the late bus is going to be starting um, next Monday. Um, so we're going to get information out to families about that. So we are moving forward with most of those, but these items we felt that we needed to put them on hold until we knew for sure with special ed where we were. So with all that said, you can see there's a small remaining balance currently right now. Um, we still have some unknowns, um, but we're looking at all the lines. Um, on Tuesday, the Budget Committee is going to meet, and we're going to be going over this, and we're going to do a, a deep dive into special ed. Amy will be there to answer any questions for the Budget Committee, and then we'll bring back a recommendation if we need to do anything further with the budget um, at the next school board meeting. And that's what I have. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Question. Board Member Brown. Just one one question, Katie. Yeah. On the late bus, is that just for the middle school, or is that also going to include the high school? We were going. It, you typically it is middle and high. However, um, because of the dec we, when we decreased a bus down to five buses, the late bus is now not going to get there until about four o'clock. So it doesn't really work for the high school because kids would be waiting around for a long time from when they got out of their after school. Um, you know, whatever they had to be there for homework and stuff. So we're going to do it for the middle school. However, I talked to both Chris and Jim, and if there were high school students that need to use it, they can talk to Chris, and we can work something out with supervision at the middle school. So that's what we're going with at this point. Thank you very much. Just wanted to get the word out. Yeah. In case any students and I believe Jim is going to get the word out to his families as well. So. All right. Okay. Thank you, Katie. All right. Moving to uh, agenda item 3.4, our city council update. Councilor Austin. Good evening. The city council has not met since the last school board meeting, so I have no report this evening. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll move to our um, committee reports by standing committees, and we'll start with the chair of budget and revenue, board member Marsh. All right, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the budget and revenue committee has not met since, since our last meeting. However, as Katie Krause indicated, uh, we will be meeting on December 5th to discuss uh, at least largely uh, what was indicated by Katie Krause. Yep, Thank you. we'll also be looking at health rates and revenue projections for next year's budget. Thank you. Health rates, revenue pro um, projections, and special ed. Okay, great. All right. Um, building grounds and transportation, board member Hackworth. I have no update. We have not met since the last meeting. Okay. Uh, educational programs and c uh, community outreach. Uh, board member Whitmore. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Um, we have not met and we're actually not meeting next month. Um, so everyone jot that down. Um, and so the next schedule will be made up by the new chair of educational uh, committee in January. Right. So Thanks. we're striking the December 12th meeting off. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. And uh, striking also. Um, One less meeting. Uh, policy as well. Yes. So, okay. All right. Well, we'll move to, we'll move forward with um, policy. Board Member Tierney. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. The policy committee did meet, <laughs> but just slackers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so we met last night. Um, and we basically spent the bulk of the time talking about policy EHAB, uh, which is data governance and security. Um, <clears throat> this is a policy that um, sort of how typically how we've proceeded with the last, the more recent policies where we've looked at the sample policy that's been pr put forth by the National School Board Association. Um, because really when they go through and update their policies, they're looking at any laws that have changed, anything that's new and, you know, relevant that needs to be considered. And we're comparing those policies to our current policies and generally finding them to be, um, you know, lacking in some regard that they just don't have as much information as the, the sample policies from the NHSBA do have. So we will be... Um, We'll be putting forth that sample policy for, for the board to consider in the next month. Um, but I will just say that w there were some questions that we, that, that really came from reviewing this policy. One big outstanding thing is that we actually don't have currently a data governance plan um, for the district. And so that's something that would be looked at. So the idea is that we'll, we'll approve this policy and then there's going to have to be some discussions, you know, at administratively. Um, we, don't have a, a, a currently anybody in charge. So as an ISO and information security officer, we don't have anybody currently um, in that role. Um, and there's just some other things like training, like basically data. So it's all about data, uh, privacy and security, right? So there needs to be training for the staff. So they need to understand what you can use, what you can do with personal information, what you can't do, how it should be used, um, you know, who, who does need to use or need to have access to it? Um, there's also there was a a point that we spent quite a bit of time on um, in regards to having pr written parental consent. So if a student is taking like an assessment or doing something, and the example that came up was that like a career tech in the career tech program, if they are taking an assessment to be you know certified in something that they have to provide personal information, and so 
um, you know, what do you do with that? Um, you know, do they have permission um, to provide that information? And also um, any third parties that provide software for us. So any of the software we're using where students need to put information, um, we do need to get parental permission that the students can provide that, that information. Um, so we talked quite a bit about those things. Um, and I just, just for everybody's, you know, knowledge, basically the, the standards that we would be looking at, so the New Hampshire Department of Education, they have a minimum standards for privacy and security of student employee data. So that is the um, document, I guess, as it were, um, that is referenced in this policy. So that, that is basically the, the standards, the guidelines that we would be using. Um, so we will look at, actually we are, what did we decide to do? Because we're not meeting next month. No, nope, there's no nope. yeah. policy and uh, ed, ed programs, uh, no meeting. It's, it's just budget on the 5th and Ooh. our regular school board meeting on the 12th. R right, no, no, no. I'm just saying I, I couldn't tie up like when we're actually looking at this policy again. I, we agreed to, I was going to go and make the changes and yes. run them by you. Okay. And then we'd have that brought, f I'm sorry, am I on? Yeah. yeah. We would bring it forward for a first read on the 12th of December. So we are, okay, so first read first. Okay, sorry. I think I was was just I was in this la la land of we don't have a policy meeting so I forgot that we actually will yeah, be first meeting <laughs> on the 12th first. for it for this one and then we have some some um, okay so yeah. yeah so the only thing that's sort of different there procedurally is that typically right the policy committee would look at that first from that you know with those edits and then we'd bring it to the board so I think that's why I was thinking there was something we were doing wrong there. But I, I think it's fine because we did discuss all the changes that we would be making. Board Member Demers? I'm just a process clerk. It makes sense to have a first reading with a board that will not yeah, we be discussed the board that. doing the second Yeah, we talked, we talked about that. Yep. Yeah, did yep. <laughs> no, it was like a, it's a, well, it's a 2019 requirement that we have, not, we don't have in place and we didn't change, oh, we didn't change any of like it's so technical in the in its language. It wasn't like from the board. We could, I mean, if we if it'll we be see in the packet. The 12th, what's that? I was gonna say it'll be in the packet for the yeah. board to read. No, I okay. just don't want to waste it. anyone's time when if I vote for first read and then. I'm not on the board anymore for the second reading. That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Anyone say yep. anything? I mean, just yeah, I, I mean. It's a first read. You can yeah. abstain from the vote. No, uh, I'm, just, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm wondering why you don't. I'm wondering why we don't want to wait for the new board uh, unless there's some urgent thing. Like this is, uh, it's, I've said this a lot over yeah. the last few weeks. Like why are we trying to cram all this in unless there's an emergency or like you said, we're out of Did, compliance. Yeah. It might just before I think that we when we talked about this, it was like to, to we're developing like data governance. Um, is it a tool or something with our tech plan? So it was in alignment with that. So we were like, well, it wasn't the board member Brown and Tierney are you and, and board member Clark are fantastic at like going through like the law and being, oh, we're out of compliance. We need to be in compliance with with a certain data governance. So, um, yeah, board member Marsh, go ahead. Thank you. So I, I think those are all valid points, but I tend to agree with Board Member Demers. Um, I think unless there's an urgency, it, it's important, and, and I and I and I have respect and trust for those um, on the committee. Um, but I think it's not just about outgoing members, but it's about incoming members of being able to vote on the first reading and the second on this. Um, so I and I think that has value. Now, if we don't do it that way, I certainly won't lose sleep over that. Um, but I think you know it's a really great point made, um, and I would lean towards that. Board Member Wentworth and Paul. I'm going to make another really great point. Um, <laughs> um, so I, what I'm hearing is that possibly even there's no rush necessarily to get it done, but it's. Oh, we're in process of being com in compliance. Do you know what I mean? Like it looks like we're we're moving towards that, and um, and that the policy itself has like 
really gone through everything and it would be for first read tonight i think if it was if it, i i know it's not mm -hmm. but i mean just procedurally um that that's the only like big hold up mm -hmm. so um i was thinking that the first reading next session was because we wanted to show that we're doing our due diligence and then we're going to be in compliance and moving towards that direction okay. all right board member mccallion um you may be in compliance but then the new board who may not understand first reading and second reading and and vote so they missed the first chance of the first part so it's best to just go through the process because everything is a process and i understand the compliance but still you have a new board coming in not everybody's a new board, but there are a few people that are going to be new, so they should have that chance. I did. And I don't, it, it doesn't matter to me if you want to do it at the next meeting or the one, you could actually have three readings. The other thing that I'm charged and responsible for doing is training the, and along with the chair, the, chair uh, the new folks to bring them up to speed. So it's not like they're going to be coming in fresh that night and just learning all this. I'm going to do my due diligence and actually sit down with them and say, here's what's on the docket just to prep them and it gives me an opportunity to sit down with them but if you want to wait I'm perfectly fine with that I, I mean could we just one possibility is we could have it uh, updated and ready for first read just just procedurally like there it is in the packet the, the entirety of this board can read it and if there seems to be any concerns confusion or anything we could always table it right a, a, a um, middle ground may be that we can bring it forward so we can review it would be sure. nice to have it in the public you know to be able to be re reviewed but we don't have to act on it but at our next meeting we can yep. just have eyes on it yeah that's fine yep I highly know any of the content is controversial <laughs> or any like that's not uh, it just yeah. is very much out of the norm to set a board and at their first meeting have them vote on a second reading of something they weren't there for without extraordinary circumstances in typical procedures and functioning of bodies of things yeah i think I, I i agree with that that's why we're not having so many meetings to waste the time and i think i asked like two meetings ago what do you want on the reading because this is it you know because december 12th will not be that meeting for it so I yeah, think we're, I think we're good with we could we can bring it since the work was done. Yeah. I would like the board and the public to be able to see it in our packet, but we don't have I, there's there isn't a rush until yeah urgency. All right, all right. Summersworth Middle School presentation. We like to do it. In, should we introduce them officially? And I'll well, yeah, you can. Uh, I can introduce um, Principal Lampron. He can come Absolutely. on up and, and yeah and introduce his students and the topic perfect welcome. welcome welcome everyone you got to see some school board work isn't that so exciting <laughs> are you right you're going to go right for the, the video right for it go right to the video okay i'm going to move out of the way <clears throat> Ready? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had your student come home from school and you ask them, how was your day? And their only response was, good. Then you followed up with, what did you do? And they answered, nothing. Well, our presentation tonight aims to fill some of the holes in those responses and to help show everybody what life is like at the middle school. I'm here to get us started. Then we'll transition to the stars of our presentation, our students, and we'll close with a video. I'm James Lampron, the proud principal of Summersworth Middle School, and this is Jen Spector, our very talented and hardworking assistant principal. This is our third year working together at the middle school, and over the last three years, we've been on a mission to continue building a positive culture and climate within our school. With that goal as a backdrop, we're very mindful about who we bring in to support our students and have a very clear vision for what we're looking for. During each interview for all potential new staff members, we ask the typical questions about content, classroom management, making student staff connections, and we give candidates an opportunity to ask questions. At the end of the interview, we always end the same way. 
asking each candidate if he or she checks the following boxes. Are you aware of the weather you bring? We want as much sunshine in the building as possible, knowing middle school can be tough. Sometimes, uh, so having a positive baseline and being aware of your weather is incredibly important. Do you love students, all students, the ones who meet expectations regularly and the students who test boundaries? You've got to love them all. Are you flexible? We want everything to go according to plan and we work really hard to communicate that plan, but inevitably we'll need to pivot and we're looking for staff members who are willing to maintain that sunshine while demonstrating flexibility. Are you self-aware and understand it's not only about what you say, but posture, tone, and volume in which you say something with? Are you willing to contribute to the bigger picture? We're looking for staff members who are willing, who are, uh, who dominate their classroom with engaging lessons, but also contribute uh, beyond their classroom and help make our school an incredible place to work, learn, and be. And are you a hard worker? Because our building is filled with hard workers, so if we were to bring someone in who wasn't, they would stand out quickly. So when we do this, we're introducing, we're introducing what we're looking for with all new staff members, and we're also reinforcing it with the entire committee, which includes current staff. A typical hiring committee will include a lead teacher, a content area teacher, Jen and myself. So many have heard this message multiple times over again and could recite it for me if they were asked to. If we're declaring these boxes as important, it's critical that Jen and I model and reinforce these behaviors daily, which we try our best to do. So now we've laid out these expectations for what we're looking for, and now how do we keep that message going with staff? Once you're part of our staff, we routinely share our foundational beliefs. As you can see on the staff meeting and leadership council agendas, we begin each meeting with these foundational beliefs. Make SMS a positive experience for all and an incredible place to work, learn, and be. Celebrate positives and successes and lift others up. And have clear expectations for staff and students behaviorally and academically. These terms are now used regularly in day-to-day -day conversations. So you'll often hear staff talking to each other about their weather. And we have staff will, who will talk to their spouses at home about their weather and asking them to check their weather. Um, and whether we're deciding to implement new ideas or make changes, the conversation always comes back to, will the result of this implementation or change contribute to making SMS a great place to work, learn, and be? So these foundational beliefs aren't boxes we check and we're done, but more like targets we're always working towards in order to continuously improve. Speaking of improvement, and before we get into our student presentation, we want to share some positive uh, behavior data with you all. So I'm going to do my best to explain this. All blue bars are from last school year. All <laughs> purple, excuse me. Okay. All blue bars are from this current school year. So, purple. Purple. oh purple my goodness. Is, purple is last year, red is this year. Thank you. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Got Jen. It. <laughs> they changed the uh, slide on you. Uh, Jen is very talented and hardworking assistant principal. <laughs> 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 okay, reset. The purple bars are, represent last year's students. The red bars represent this year's students. So this is last year's sixth grade, is the same group of students as this, our current seventh grade. So as you can see, in the month of September, this group of students had a decline in referrals. This is our current eighth grade group of students. As you can see, this group of students is the same as this group of students. That is an incredibly powerful reduction in office referrals, and you better believe we feel that as a building, both as students and as staff. That was September. This is October. Current sixth grade, current seventh grade, current eighth grade. Our current sixth graders have come in ready to learn. Kudos to them and their families, our sixth grade team, Principal McNelly, Principal Ferguson, and the Maplewood staff for having them ready to learn uh, and jump right into middle school our current seventh grade students in October, the same group of students last year as sixth graders. So as you can see, huge reduction in referrals here. Current eighth grade students, same group of students as seventh graders last year. As you can see, huge reduction in referrals. And again, you better believe we feel all that, both students and staff and across the building. This is a little cleaner and easier to explain. Orange is our current year to date referrals. Yellow is our year-to-date last year. So we don't have last year from our sixth graders because they were at Maplewood School, but they're right where we want them to be. This is great, this is great data right here. Seventh grade students have a slight reduction from last year. Last year they were already in a pretty good spot. 
they continue to be in a good spot, but they're still improving slightly. Our eighth graders year to date last year, it's the same group of students. Uh, incredible amount of maturity uh, and hard work on their part, and you can see this reduction. And like I said before, you better believe students feel that, our staff and building feel that as well. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jen. So I have the privilege of introducing our student speakers. We're going to be starting with our sixth graders first. So our sixth graders, we're going to share a little bit about what their experiences are like as sixth graders at SMS. We have Rian Patel and Joseph Mawantu. Come on down. Good evening, friends. Family and families and community members. My name is Rian. Um, and my name is Joseph. We are so excited to be here today to tell you a little bit a little bit about the life of a sixth grader at SMS. Our schedule has been a big change from what we were used to at Maplewood. We rotate through five different classes every day: math, science, social studies, and two language arts classes. In math, we are working on multiplying and dividing fractions. Afterwards, we will begin looking at positive and negative integers. In science, we are finishing up studying the layers of Earth, and we are currently moving into the Continental Drift Unit. In social studies, we are about to wrap up our, our unit on early humans and the Stone Age, which culminated with our Stone Age feast. In language arts, we are wrapping up our narrative unit with two really cool books, Walk Two Moons and Touching Spirit Bear. We also have time during our day to work on different skills. We may need help on white days. We have WIN, which stands for what I need. During this time, students get extra support in reading or math, depending on what every individual student needs. On blue days, we go to the learning lab for extra help with homework assignments. At SMS, we have a ton of opportunities to get us involved in our community and school. Youth to youth, band, chorus, basketball, and yearbook club, just to name a few. Students can also participate in SYC. Every day at SYC, we start with homework lab, and after that, we have a choice of fun activities. We are so lucky to have, to have the great opportunities we do at SMS. Thank you for your time. Great job, guys. Thank you. All right, so next up from seventh grade, we have Jordan Pock and Nia Verne Griffith. And I said it correctly. Yes. <laughs> hi, I'm uh, uh, Hi, I'm Jordan Pock. I'm Jordan. Hi, I'm Nia. We want to share a little bit about an average school day for our seventh graders at SMS. During an average school day, we always have math and language arts. Every other day, we have uh, social studies and science, as well as our other essentials. In social studies, we have been learning about culture and populations. Some of the things we have learned about are developing and, de and developed nations, as well as poverty. In math, we, are learning how we, uh, we have been learning how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide rational numbers. In language arts, we have been reading The Outsiders. While we read, we have been analyzing the different characters from the book. In science, we have been learning about uh, anatomy. Recently, we learned about digestive, the digestive system. In computers, we have been making portfolios and our top five. In art, we have been making wooden toy cars. In band and chorus, we have been practicing the different pieces that will be performed for the next concert. In gym class, we are learning how to play many different sports and activities. In family consumer science, we have been so sewing uh, our own monsters. In research skills, uh, this uh, we have uh, have spent time picking and researching uh, a travel destination. This involves uh, researching the weather, learning about the destination, and playing our finances. Some other things going on at the school have been exciting are the school dances. Once a month, we have a school dance where we get to dance and hang out with our friends. Another event that recently happened was a uh, fall festival. During this, uh, during this day, we have act outdoor activities, marathon kickball, and fun classroom activities. At the end of the day, we get to cheer on the volleyball team 
and a staff first student game. We also have many after school activities av available to SMS students, such as drama club, yearbook club, and esports, which is brand new this year. We also are just starting the basketball season and had a great turnout for tryouts. Students are all can also participate in SYC. Some of the activities we do are gym time, homework time, or arts and crafts, and bowling. We are so lucky to have the great opportunities we do at SMS. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jordan and Nia. And last but not least, our eighth graders to share a little bit about their uh, experience at SMS. We have Liam Hanlon and Sophia Malo. Good evening, I'm Liam Hanlon. And I'm Sophia, and I'm Sophia Malo. And we're here today to tell you a little about eighth grade at SMS. This has been a pretty good year so far. In our academics, we have been studying all kinds of topics from electricity and early colonization to exponents and the Salem witch trials. Our teachers have tried their hardest to support everybody and make lessons creative and fun. We are currently studying magnetism and the French and Indian War, angles, relationships, and archetypes in the hero's journey. One thing I really like about SMS is the after school activities this year. I played soccer and I'm currently doing dissection and win in drama club after school. You can see me this spring in Trek Junior the Musical. I also really like the opportunities at SMS. I played volleyball this fall and I'm in student leadership in trimester two. I will be working on the hill our SMS student news. This year as a whole grade went to Camp Mytina for a day of outdoor learning and we also went to Salem Mass and visited the Salem Witch Museum the Witch Dungeon, and the Salem Witch Trials Memorial. In student leadership, I have planned Spirit Week and Fall Festival, and Liam and I are both working on Toys for Tots. And that's one of the best parts about SMS. We are a community that includes everyone. There are so many opportunities to get involved. We work hard to be safe, respectful, responsible, and cooperative. We all want SMS to be a great place to learn and be. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you, Liam and Sophia, and let's give a round of applause for all of our student speakers. We know how hard it is to talk in front of adults. <laughs> Good job. So we're going to end with um, a video we've put together. We hope it'll give you a little bit more insight into what a day in the life of an SMS student actually looks like. Um, huge credit to one of our seventh grade ELA teachers, Nicole Tremblay, who did a fantastic job putting this video together. So without her, it wouldn't have looked like this. So we hope you enjoy it.
In 8th grade science, we are learning about electricity. How much all of the positive charge from this builds up on me instead of being able to be grounded into the floor, which is where it wants to go, but it can't. It can't get through me to the floor. I'm too far away, there's air in between me, but what does it do? But if I let Savannah be my ground and instead I touch her, <laughs> it grounds through me. In seventh grade social studies, we are learning about culture and population. Kids? In seventh grade science, we are learning about anatomy. Today, we learned about the circulatory system. In LA, we're reading The Outsiders, which is a pretty awesome book. Let's go check it out. Every SMS student has an essentials class. For essentials, we have things like gym, FCS, research skills, art, and computers. We're working on our digital portfolios and movies. In eighth grade research skills, we've been doing our Genius Hour project. That concludes our presentation. Thank you for your attention. We hope you enjoyed it and that it provided some insight into a day in the life of an SMS student. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I think that a couple of board members would like to say something. Board member Tierney. Thank you. I continue to be so impressed. I don't know if other school board other districts have in those school board meetings their students get up to speak. Um, I'm just always impressed by the poise and the articulation of you guys. You just you did an amazing job. So good for you. And nobody seemed nervous at all. I don't know if you felt it, but you didn't seem nervous. And you know what I really, really loved was the look of pride on Ms. Spector and Mr. Lamprey's faces. Just they were so proud of you guys.
Yeah, that's just you did a great job. Um, I, I think that's all I was going to say. Just good job. Great. Good job. Okay. Board Member Brown. I'm also just very proud of you. I mean, being a lawyer, you know, advocacy is a big thing, and public speaking is the first step you need to master to get your advocacy, get your message across. And I am just so proud, sixth, seventh, eighth graders, at how well you speak and conveyed to us. It's going to serve you well, whatever issue you take on and, and champion, it's going to serve you well. And again, I'm just so proud of the school producing this product. I am so proud to be here. So proud of you all. Thank you. Board Member Demers. Yes, great job talking, um, using big words and saying them right. We mess that up sometimes. Um, very well thought out, and I appreciate you guys taking time to come and speak with us. You kind of heard a little back and forth earlier where I was like, are we, you know, this is a very busy month, so I wanted to thank the administrators for all being here too. Um, as the board can tell you, I'll always say, like, do we really need to make them come? They just had parent-teacher conferences. There's chorus concerts coming up. like, And this makes it worth your while, I promise, the impact that you have for us as a board who, in turn, then can support these great kids and programs. Um, and I say it every time as somebody who has middle schooler at home I don't know how you run buildings full of them and um, it, it just amazes me all the good work and then I also just wanted to point out that when the video was running I was wondering if it was blue and white day because but it wasn't and so I just really think it's worth noting the topper pride that is just throughout the classrooms on a random Tuesday for this video being filmed with the different sports or not even that. It just was like some is worth hoodies and things like that. And I thought that was worth pointing out too. So good job, everybody involved. Thanks. Board member Marsh followed by Wentworth. I'd like to see all the students up here someday. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see you up here in the decision making role, whether it's here or wherever municipality that you that you live in um, because we need that compassion we need that, that passion we need that articulation and we need that thinking that clearly you bring uh, to what you do um, so I want you to consider that uh, as you advance um, within your schools and uh, as it was indicated you know the, the power of, of public speaking the power of articulation the power of words and thinking um, you know, we certainly need that as a, as a community, as a state, and as a nation. Um, so thank you. Oh my gosh, my, f my face, my cheeks are so sore. Um, you guys all did an amazing job, and some of you I remember from like kindergarten, and um, you guys are just absolutely like the cream of the crop like I mean this is really exciting um, all of you did an amazing job speaking I don't know I I don't speak that well uh, a lot of the times but I'm up here so clearly you can do anything <laughs> thanks guys okay uh, board member McCallion and do you have Tierney okay. <laughs> yeah it is a great job even from seasoned people being up here it's always nerve-wracking um, if we could go back to that, though, even since we have some of the um, staff here and stuff like that, I know that back uh, my daughter's freshman year, they had council up here. So you actually used um, the kids to come in because this is, this is basically your house. You get to come in here, you get to sit up here, and you get to do like a mock school board or a mock uh, council. So I think we can bring that back, and I'm sure that's something that I'm sure the teacher. I'm not trying to add more to the teachers, trust me, but... Again, it's one of those things that really helps, you know, the students with education on that. And, again, he did a great job today, I want to say that, because, again, it's very hard being up here speaking, and it's nerve-wracking. And you're trying to make sure that you're getting your point across, but you're also trying to make sure you're explaining everything correctly. But awesome job today. Great job. Uh, okay, Tierney, followed by Marsh. Yeah, I, I actually had a question Is that on? Okay, um, for the administrators and b before I – was hoping to get them before they sat down. But um, the big jump 
uh, the improvement, or I should say, yeah, the improvement in the lack of referrals from the eighth grade, right, that big decrease that you saw. What, has there been any discussion amongst your, amongst the staff and like what contributed to that? I'm sure there's a few things. I, that would have been the, that would have been the group that came in right after COVID, right? Like they came back right after sort of full time after being remote or hybrid or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's like a, a it was no one particular thing that said this was the difference. Um, but first of all, credit to the students because they're the ones making the change. Credit to our eighth grade team, Ms. Hanlon, Ms. Lambert, um, and Ms. Healy are our eighth grade core, and we've added three really solid pieces to support them. So they have a strong team. Our essentials team is really strong, so they're surrounded by strong teachers. Our expectations have been clear now. We're getting stronger as administrators in year three, so everything's kind of coming together, and the data is just reflecting that. It's not only at, it's not only behaviorally, but that in turn is improving academic performance and really classroom experience. So it's we showed behavior but there's a trickle-down effect of, of other positives that come from that. Member Marsh? Just briefly, um, school board member McCallion just brought back a memory. Um, settle in, settle a, in, a, kids. A positive Thanks. memory. Uh, may not be going to bed. Memory, okay, okay, let's go. Um, that uh, we called it Student Government Day. It was Student Government Day. And uh, in high school, um, I represented Ward 4, um, as a city, as a student representing on the city council um, for student government day. And uh, so that was a good memory. Thank you. All right. Well, I think what we're trying to say is that you're very welcome here. We're very proud of you. And if um, anyone would like to come up and s speak or sit up here, you're most welcome. And it's an open invitation. But really, it's almost 8 o'clock. Um, thank you so much for the presentation, but students, um, you are free to leave and, you know, go home before we start. So with that, thank you so much. One more, la one more round. Jack can go too. Can yeah, go. Jack too. Yeah, we'll give him some time to. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. <sighs> Jack did a nice job. And, oh goodness, okay. Oh. <laughs> well, look what you did, Maggie. Get a room. Right. It's my great my my gesture of goodwill. So, yeah, they can they can watch at home. All right, let's move on to policies. <coughs> Agenda item number six. We have three policies for first reading. Do I have a motion to read them by title only or a motion for first reading and we can read them in its entirety? <laughs> motion to read by title only. Okay. We have second. Second. <laughs> no, no. okay. All in favor say aye. All aye. right. Uh, board member Tierney, please um, have the policies for first reading by title only. Okay. Policy B E D G meeting minutes. Okay. Are we, okay. Gotcha. E policy E B C C false alarms, bombs, active shooter, and other such threats, and policy I J O A field trips and excursions. Okay. So these policies are read. They were all in your packet. This yeah. is the first read, and at our December twelfth meeting, they'll be on for a second reading and adoption. All right. Any questions? Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, uh, moving to agenda item number seven is uh, superintendent goals. This was included in your packet and for the public for awareness, um, they're not too long. And superintendent, shall I yes. read them out, out loud? Okay. All right. So based on our, um, this board's kind of review of what our goals are and our uh, leadership styles and where we're looking for in a superintendent for our evaluation. This was expounded upon um, and Superintendent um, Gozinski 
uh, elaborated for this for this year. Um, many of these have already been in motion, but for the public and for our, you know, you know, for our meeting's sake, uh, we put it in the packet. So, um, I will. There are four goals here, and uh, goal number one to improve the school district's communication and community presence with all stakeholders through a marketing and branding campaign um, commensurate with the superintendent's evaluation date to be determined by the school by the school board goal number two to be visible and present in all schools in order to gain a greater understanding of student educational co-curricular and extracurricular programs as well as faculty and staff instructional needs commensurate with the superintendent's evaluation date to be determined by the school board which usually at the end of the year goal number three uh, to make to make much to make needed updates to school programming and systems um, curriculum school safety technology special education commensurate with the superintendent's evaluation date goal number four to collaborate and empower school administrators to participate in school and system-wide decision-making for the betterment of themselves students families faculty and stack staff for example, policy, educational programming, budgeting, professional development, curriculum, communication, etc. Um, those are the four. These are underway, and this is for the, you know that we will refer to in our evaluation that we will you know do later in the spring with the um, new members on the board. Yep, board member Wentworth. It refers a lot to the um, school board's evaluation, and that will be in the spring. You said. Yeah, tip, we'll have to get a date for that, but okay. since we already have the evaluation kind of rubric of what we're looking for and the styles, these goals have already, you know, we've already communicated them in our, um, as a board in general, but these are kind of for the public to know and to kind of have, um, be publicly available to see. Yep. Um, remind me, did we see the results of, so when we all did took that survey, yep. right? Did we, as a board, see what our results were? Like, what, kind of like where we all, yeah, I collectively, because you're saying these these came these, from that, yeah, from that. Yep. So I just, I guess, I don't remember yeah, a discussion. I, I, be, I mean, that's another thing too. Just um, for the packet for our next meeting to put this plug this in so the outcome goals this is what these are mm -hmm. are part of that that you plug in each year um so i share that again with this is the update you know for these goals i think it in our old you know we had some placeholders in there but this is more in aligned with what we're looking for so i can share that with you it's we've we've had it before it was a while ago okay. it was like last winter um in spring yep all right wonderful Thank you. Thank you for putting this together. Um, agenda item eight, where there's no old or unfinished business. Um, we struck the 11th and the 12th um, policy meeting on the 11th and the ed programs on the 12th. So our next, our budget and revenue um, committee meeting at the SAU was December 5th at 530. And our last board member um, board meeting of the year is December 12th here comments by visitors. I do not see anyone in the room. We cleared out. We, we do have one. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Ms. Farron. Um, all right. So I'll move on to uh, comments by board members. Are there any comments by board members this evening? Yes, board member Tierney. Um, Summersworth Berwick Christmas Parade starts at 1.30 this Saturday. Be there at B-Square. Board member Demers. I just wanted to congratulate Chairperson Larson on being selected as the City of Summersworth, what, Citizen of the Year, Mom of the Year, like all the th person of the century. No, Citizen of the Year. Um, I think that that's a huge honor and congratulations. And something tells me all your TV time in this room may have put you on the radar of the selection committee so Thank congrats you. yeah if you're december 7th 5 30 at the barn red barn at the outlook oh that's gala. a good venue everyone's invited a gala it's that a sounds gala. a little over not my head. black tie but oh thank you i appreciate it our and that's the chamber the, that voted on it's the, the falls yeah. chamber yeah. which is north berwick in berwick south berwick rollinsford and Summersworth. that's but awesome i think it's it was 
formed out of Summersworth. Yeah. The teacher of the year. The teacher of the year. Yep. The teacher of the year is Mr. Inglefinger at the um, Summersworth High School, oh. and um, the nonprofit is the Indonesian uh, Community Connect program. Ooh. And uh, business is Eastern Propane. Wow. I have oil, so. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other closing comments? We do have a non-public. We do have non-public, but not to not to abbreviate anyone's closing comments. Um, all right. Yeah. Thank you to the middle school again. That's wonderful. Hopefully, we'll get we'll have more of that. That was great. They did such a wonderful job. Um, hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I did finish up my. I wrote um, thank you and gratitude um, notes to all of our employees in the district and believe they were received well. I've been spun on my mind to do for a while. I just needed to Wait, can you come. elaborate on that? Like to every single one of them? Yeah. Or like one letter to each building? I tried to personalize a letter to each individual wow. as, as much as I could. Um, this, this position for, you know, going on my seventh year of making decisions and discussing things that impact in, um, you know, have, you know, have uh, influence over so many people and not being in the, you know, not being in the schools and knowing how hard people worked. I just wanted to communicate my, um, my real gratitude in, in a small way, you know, of writing to um, everyone in every, hopefully if I, if I missed anyone, please let me know. But um, from our teachers and our paras and our custodians to support staff to um, our, um, you know, our cafeteria staff, um, to our, uh, you know, people that are helping, um, you know, uh, outside contractors. I tried to get everyone in there. So um, I think 300 plus. So I was honored to do it. And um, awesome. it's just an honor to be up here and be able to relay that. I'm not able to uh, say that to everyone personally. So, all right. Yeah. All right, with that, do I have a motion to go into non-public according to chapter 91A32, A and C? Is that any motion to go? Make a motion, 91A32, A and C on our uh, all right, agenda. All right, all right. I make a motion to go into non-public Per, oh, I just lost it. Um, per chap, uh, chapter 91 8.3, 2 A and C. Yeah, second. second. Okay. Maggie Larson? Yes. Todd Marsh? Yes. Paul Hackworth? Yes. Tom McCallion? Yes. Marsha Brown? Yes. Barbara Wentworth? Yes. Susan Tierney? Yes. Mandy Demers? Yes. Thank you. And do we all sign the manifests? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dan.